Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the mailbox for the 30th of January 2012. My name is Total Biscuit, bringing you your daily dose of community interaction, gaming discussion, and all that good stuff. You can email in mailbox at cynicalbrit.com. That's mailbox at cynicalbrit.com with topics for future shows. Game in the background is once again Dark Messiah of Might and Magic. I don't really think I need to keep qualifying this, do I? It's Dark Messiah again. Hey guys, it's Dark Messiah. Well, just keep playing Dark Messiah because it's pretty cool. Admittedly, it does remind me of the things that I didn't like about it, which is it's always nice, I think, to revisit a game that you've got a very rosy vision of and see whether or not it's still good. The answer is yes, it is, but there were bits which annoyed the hell out of me, and still do to this very day. All right, the first email comes in from JubJub Jub that says this. So what do you think about the pricing of games? And do you think it's fair for someone to pay £40 for a game like Skyrim, which has many hours of gameplay and content? It was a concept idea for five years and took three to actually make, but to also have to pay £40 for a six hours and done FPS that was made in under a year. Do you think the prices of games such as Skyrim should rise or that six hours and done game prices should fall or something else entirely? Would you like to remind me which six hours and done FPS you've paid £40 for lately? Because if you say Call of Duty, I'm going to slap you. You want to know why I'm going to slap you? Because there are people getting hundreds upon hundreds of hours of gameplay out of that game. Why? Because it's a multiplayer focused shooter. If it was just a single player shooter with nothing else, then you would have a point. Absolutely, no question. 40 pounds for a six hours and done shooter, definitely. Or another example being 40 pounds for a six hours and done shooter that has a tacked on multiplayer mode. Yeah, you have a point there. For a lot of people, that is not acceptable. However, here's the thing about video game prices. What is an acceptable price differs from person to person, depending on various factors, including, of course, their opinions and, more importantly, their financial situation. For some people, dropping £40 on a console game is not a big deal. For others, it is a huge deal. And as a result, expectations and what that person requires from the game in order to believe that they've got a good value experience changes. For me, for example, being a person that doesn't really have a lot of time on my hands, so let's just say I was your normal working adult, which I pretty much am, only I put in more hours than your normal working adult. Anyway, besides the point, I am okay paying for a six hour or so experience as long as it's a really good six hour experience. Would I pay 40 pounds for it? I don't know. I mean, I could afford it, yes, but even then it's pushing the boundaries of what I'd find acceptable. I know back when I was just out of university and I was in sort of a entry-level job and wasn't really earning all that much. For me, the value that I would be looking for would be about a pound an hour. Yeah? So I would expect 30 hours of gameplay from a 30-hour game. And if it was single player, chances are I wouldn't get it unless, of course, it has some kind of skirmish mode or whatever. So RPGs, generally a good bet. I bought a lot of RPGs back then and I played them because usually RPGs do provide a longer experience than your average first-person shooter. However, do they provide more downtime and kind of non-game, I suppose, than a first-person shooter? Yeah, they actually do. First-person shooters, the single-player campaign, tends to condense everything into non-stop action, with occasional interruption with stupid hand-holding and cutscenes, but most of the time, non-stop action. So, is the six-hour game better value than the 30-hour game? Well, no. If you look straight at the mathematics, it's not. 30 hours greater than six hours, right? But then you have to think about quantity and quality. Yes, there might be 30 plus hours in this game, but how many of those hours were truly excellent? Would I pay 40 pounds for a really good six hour FPS? At the moment, I probably would. Back then I wouldn't have, but right now, yes. As someone who's got very limited time, a really great six hour experience for me, that's a good, good standard for a game. I would be very happy with that because I could just do it. It's like, hey, that was really satisfying. I enjoyed every moment of my time with this game. I'm done with it. As opposed to playing a longer game whereby there's a lot more downtime and yes there are cool moments but they're more spaced out there's a lot more filler in there for instance would you say that the hundred hours that it takes to beat dragon age while completing all of the side quests which is something that i did do once nothing but pure prime a grade content the answer is no there is a lot of filler in that an awful lot of filler so you have to think well Am I okay with the filler? Do I simply want to be able to sink time into this game or is it really high quality time? 
And that's an odd thing, really, because I'll happily go to the movies and watch some crappy movie that really that I have no business being there because I just like spending two hours in a cinema with loud noises and big screens and cool stuff on the screen. That's okay for me. And I can walk away feeling that I haven't wasted my time, unless, of course, it happens to be Skyline, in which case I will say I've wasted my time. But most of the time, I'm okay with it. And even if a lot of other people say, well, this movie was average, or this movie was just derivative, it really had no originality in it whatsoever, I'll be like, you know what, I enjoyed my two hours with it, and that's fine. With a game, I suppose you dedicate more time to it, so you feel like there has to be a higher quality there. Plus, of course, you're paying more. £40, i.e., around $60, give or take, versus 8 to £10 pounds for a cinema ticket or whatever your local region happens to be. It does vary on a case-by-case -case basis. Or indeed, look at Blu-rays and DVDs. Your average new Blu-ray costs about £18. Pounds. Usually, you can pick up a relatively new one for closer to 10 if you know where to look. And you think about, well, how much enjoyment is there there? Probably about two to three hours. You look at your ratios, and then you realize this is entirely stupid, and you shouldn't be even thinking about this crap. It means different things to different people. What I will say for a fact is you're not going to get AAA titles having significant price differences. To say that, oh, should Skyrim charge more? Well, no, it's charging what it believes the market will bear, which is around the right price, honestly, because all other games are that price. It's not a case of, oh, you pay more for this film because it's longer. That doesn't happen in any other medium. I could buy Game of Thrones, and then I could buy some crappy Warhammer novel that both cost the same. In fact, Game of Thrones is probably cheaper, considering. Game of Thrones is like twice the length at least. I could do the same with something like Lord of the Rings. Length doesn't factor into the price point. What's going to end up determining what's going on with the price is what the market does in response to seeing the price. Do they buy it at that price or do they not? I mean, you can never expect Call of Duty in its current state to sell for any less than $60. Indeed, that game never goes on sale. Barely ever. The discounts you see, even now, are incredibly stupid. On console, not so bad. On PC, you barely see any discounts on that game at all. It's pretty scary, really. We only just saw Modern Warfare 2 take a 50% off. I mean, come on, that game is, what, several games back now? Modern Warfare 3 is out. It's just fairly insane, isn't it? So you're never going to see that change because people continue to buy it at that price tag. You will see other things change. Prime example, Rayman Origins was released at full price on consoles. You know what happened? It flopped. Why? Because apparently charging $60 for a platformer these days doesn't really work out. Coming out PC at £20. So you're probably looking somewhere between $30 and $40 for that game. That will probably sell a little bit more. Some people still think that's too expensive. I, in fact, was reading the comments of a Eurogamer article on this, and quite frankly, I find the people that read Eurogamer and leave these comments to be absolutely disgraceful. Ugh, so-called PC gamers that whine about this kind of stuff. Ugh. It's like, come on, guys, really? If you've ever actually played Rayman Origins, you know for a fact that it's absolutely incredible. It is easily one of the best platformers we have seen in many, many years. But to some of these guys, £20 is a bit steep. Is it because it's a two-dimensional game? If it were 3D, would it be okay? And therein is the entire crux of the argument. Price means different things to different people. The sheer number of personal subjective factors that are brought into somebody's purchase decision mean that saying, oh, this game should be cheaper or this game should be more expensive is absolutely pointless, without question. This email comes in from somebody by the name of FF. Your parents were quite cruel by the sounds of it. God, I can imagine that. Roll call. Jimmy, present. Tom, present. <laughs> present. I'll get right to the matter at hand. I bought King Arthur 2, developed by Neocore a month or so ago. By the way, that came out, I think, yesterday. That was a pre-release purchase, which allowed you to get the prologue and play that immediately. I've had many issues getting it to work, but when I finally got it working, incomplete installation being the cause of earlier issues, I noticed how the game was atrociously laggy. After some searching, including trying out fraps to see the numbers, I found out the game was running at FPS values varying between 20 and 30. Believing this to be a problem I needed to fix, I went to the Steam forums and looked for some aid and found a huge topic with loads of views and replies about performance. Assured it would probably contain the info I need to work around the low FPS, I read through it. Turned out Neocore was defending their belief that 24 FPS is good enough for any PC game. They did claim that under 20 was bad performance. Quote, it is not performance and not too low. If it gets below 20 FPS, that is bad performance. 24 FPS is what a human eye sees as fluid, and you watch the films in the cinema with 24 FPS. Do you go to the cinema again and again to see bad performance and horribly low FPS? 
The whole thread was filled with people discussing whether or not that was the case. Some said it ran perfectly with just 30 FPS, while others claimed that 30 FPS wasn't perfect, and so on and so forth. Neocore claimed that the game was able to reach 60 FPS, but for some odd reason, all people claiming it didn't work properly said it was capped at 30. Maybe you wonder what the regular values are in terms of FPS for a standard game. Right, if Neocore is claiming that 24 FPS should be enough for anyone, then the outcry from PC gamers should be there. I'm sorry. I hate to speak badly of Neocore. They've made a good game in the past, and apparently King Arthur 2 should be pretty good. I haven't got my review copy yet. Not sure where that is. But whatever the case, the fact that they even think that 24 FPS is acceptable is mind-bogglingly stupid. 24 FPS in films, that's something that people have been trying to get rid of for years. It was a standard that was set in place, and people have been saying, oh, God, well, this should actually change. If 24 FPS is acceptable for any kind of moving picture, then please explain to me why pretty much no television has just 24 FPS as an option. Indeed, pretty much every modern television I can think of has the option to have that weird smoothing effect whereby it upscales it to 60 FPS which is really weird and I don't like it, but it's there. The option is indeed there. And I think at some point we will see movies be displayed at a higher frame rate than 24. That just happens to be the standard at the moment. The fact that you can make this claim that you can't tell the difference, it's bollocks. It is absolute bollocks. This is a myth. This myth has been circulated for decades now that we can't see more than 24. It's nonsense. You absolutely can. You can definitely tell the difference. I can always tell the difference between 30 and 60 FPS without being told. I can feel it. I can see it. It is blindingly obvious to anyone that is a PC gamer because they are used to playing games at 60 FPS. I don't know, maybe someone that's played nothing but consoles all their life, but even then, some console games do run at 60 FPS. Not all of them. Most modern ones don't, because, of course, consoles can't keep up with that kind of rendering rate anymore, but there are 60 FPS games. I could not even consider playing that game at 24 FPS. 24 FPS is freaking awful. 30 is bad enough. 24, in my opinion, is unplayable. It is simply unplayable. I would hate that. Hell, I remember Empire Total War when that first came out. The sea battles ran at about 15 to 25 FPS, and I refused to play them. I auto-resolved every sea battle because, and as far as I'm concerned, that is an unplayable frame rate for a strategy game. It's unplayable for anything. For FPS on a PC, if I'm not playing at 60, I will actually get worse at the game. There are professional Counter-Strike players that play on 1,000 FPS servers and play with CRT monitors with hyper-high refresh rates. Yes, it matters. Yes, you can feel it. To suggest otherwise is ludicrous. Absolutely ludicrous. Hell, I remember the performance issues with Civ 5. That game's turn-based, and I still hated it because I can still tell. It feels sluggish. The response times are slower. It is even bad to scroll across the map because it will be clunky and chuggy and horrible. So, no, that if they actually said this, which they did, incidentally, I have the forum right here. The quote is on Paradox Plaza by Neocore Kate, and it does in fact say exactly what is that. 24 FPS is what a human eye sees as fluid. That's bollocks. No, it's not. It is not. What a PC gamer accepts as fluid is 60. Higher than that is great, but 60 is generally pretty good. It's difficult to tell the difference between 60 and higher. It is easy to tell the difference between 30 and 60, and it is definitely easy to tell the difference between 20 and 60. That is a massive difference. I would not play it. I couldn't film that game. If that game runs at 24 FPS, I can't properly film that because I film at 30, for God's sake. Not to mention the fact that while I film at 30, I want the game to be running at 60 because that's what feels good. That's what feels smooth. 60 is acceptable. When I'm tweaking graphics or whatever, when I'm trying to push up the AA and AF and every other fancy setting, my benchmark is, can I continue to run this at 60 FPS? Will it drop below 60 FPS? Because if it will, then I retweak it until it doesn't. Because 60 FPS is the benchmark by which I find gaming to be acceptable. It actually boggles the mind. It really does. It seems hyper defensive from Neocore to say that. And it's not even a case of being taken out of context. I can see the quote right here. It's on their freaking forum. And that depresses the hell out of me, that a PC gaming developer would not understand the difference. Let me just put it out there and just set the standard right now, for those of you who don't know. As far as I'm concerned, this has been the standard for the longest time. But for some reason, some developers don't seem to get it. 
60 FPS is the benchmark that you should be aspiring to attain on any given setup, assuming that setup is good enough. It's as simple as that. That is what I should be able to reach. I don't particularly want it capped out at 60. I prefer the ability to go higher, especially if I happen to be on a 120 hertz monitor, for instance. But 60 is pretty much where I want to be. If your game cannot do that, there is something wrong with your game. Flat out. For instance, if I download that game on my PC, those of you who don't know, my PC is an overclocked 980X hexacore with SLI'd 580s and 12 gigs of 2000 megahertz RAM. It's pretty quick. If that game runs at under 60 FPS, then that game is broken. It's flat out simple as that. There is no game, no game, that will not run at 60 FPS on my machine. Unless, of course, it's capped below that. Anyone who is able to tweak the settings in the game to their liking should be able to get 60 frames per second. Sure, their computer might not be able to do it with all the graphics done to max. That's fine. We accept that. You turn the graphics down, you get the acceptable frame rate. Some people accept 30, in which case they will happily have higher graphics settings and they'll get a lower frame rate as a result. What I believe no one will accept, if they are right in the head, is 24 or lower. And under no circumstances, I might add, is it okay for a developer to say 24 FPS should be enough for anyone. That is crazy talk. All right, folks, that's me done for the day. Thank you very much for watching the mailbox, and I will see you next time.